Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am opening post from Anson and Brenda Maddox. I'm super excited about this, as you can imagine. But I also have this envelope, something from Card Market from Germany. And I also have a book. But you know what? I'm just going to start probably with the best part. I know we should kind of build stuff up, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna open this up and I'm gonna show you the card inside. It's an artist proof, I can also tell you that. It is from Blue, and I actually already own one. Here we go. So this is it. Anson Maddox, this is an artist proof reconstruction. And you might be wondering why would you wanna have two artist proofs, uh, artist proof reconstructions? Ooh, also a nice card here, by the way. Happy Holidays by Ensign and Brand. That's it's, it's just really good people. Sorry for the oversight. Hope it wasn't too great of an inconvenience. Happy New Year, Brenda. Of course it wasn't. And it wasn't, it was all cool. It's all good. When it comes to these things, I am not in a hurry. The nice thing is that the Brenda and Ensign, they're very easy to communicate with. Um... And you know, they're just, you can trust them, you know, which is nice. Anyway, um, let me take this out, show you the card. So reconstruction, a card originally from antiquities. And the unique thing about it is it doesn't have the anvil. So this is not a misprint. All the reconstructions of antiquities are missing their set symbol, the anvil. Here you can see the signature by Anson, just very clean. And it's just completely white here at the back right just how an artist proof is supposed to be and uh, maybe you're wondering why i didn't ask for anson to draw something on it well that's because i already have one let me just carefully put it back i already have one because i own a global set of reconstructions let me actually show you my set because i'm just going to add the cart here to the set so this is actually the global set this is a summer magic card. We, we have some glare, unfortunately, but this is a summer magic card. We've got all the different versions. Here you can see the original antiquities one and all the uh, foreign language versions. Here you can see the revised one. And here you see my other artist proof. So as you can see, this one has an artwork on it. So I actually wanted to have one with an artwork. Let me just get it out for you. And one with a blank back. So this one, pretty cool art, right? So the reconstruction, artist proven, this is the one with the blank back. So I just wanted to have both to kind of complete the set. And um, I think reconstruction actually is, is quite playable, especially in old school where you of course play with Chaos Orb. And I mean, a blue deck, just a blue artifacts deck, I think it's, it's really strong with copy artifacts and reconstructions and all the robots, of course. So one blue sorcerer, you bring one artifact from your graveyard to your hand. It's just it's very simple it, it hardly sees play but i think it's playable let me know in the comments if you've ever played with reconstruction or considered playing with it i mean there's very little graveyard hate in old school i mean you've got torment's crypt but you don't see it that often so i think it's a good card um anyway to move on because i've got more posts uh, but this is a book it's part of a collection and this is the last one i need let's see this came from Germany, picked it up on Amazon, I think the German Amazon. And live, you know, living in the Netherlands, Germany is pretty close by, so. And this was way more like affordable than it was in, um, in other countries, including the Netherlands. So we've got Eternal Ice, Ice Age Cycle, book two. After the darkness comes the ice, thousands of years after the explosion at Argoth that ended the Brothers' War, ice has covered the world of Dominaria. The strong have turned to barbarism, the weak have died. Now Limdol, a necromancer, with a taste for power, seeks to awaken a deeper evil. This is, I've been told that this is a really good series, so now I have The Gathering Dark, which is about the set The Dark, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good book. This is number two. So now I can continue with number two because I also have number three, A Shattered Alliance. So it's complete. It feels good to have the set complete. 
I don't know why, why, why would you put this on here? Okay, I'm gonna try to take it off, but I'll, I'll do that after I've recorded this video because there's still one more little piece of post that I wanna open and show you guys, which is this. So I ordered some cards on Card Market. They're in here, including, I believe, is it a collector's edition card, which is not for me. Uh, it's for a buddy of mine. If you're watching Ian, your bodyguard should be in here. People sometimes ask me where I order my foreign black border cards. I all, most of them I order through Card Market. Nice little token. And the thing is with, with Card Market, if you've ordered a few times on it, you kind of know, um, you know, who's good, who to trust, etc. And here we go. So this is the, the bodyguard. Just gonna have a look. So veteran bodyguard, two white and three, a two five. Summon bodyguard, unless bodyguard is stepped, any damage done to you by unblocked creatures is done to the bodyguard. You may not take this damage yourself, though you can prevent it if possible. So pretty cool, and this is a uh, international edition. So I'm going to send this to Ian. So this is coming your way, buddy. Um, so it's going to Canada. Canada. You're shipping out, you're shipping out. So let's, let, let's put it here. And then we have mana batteries, right? <laughs> They're a little bit unplayable, but I'm actually collecting uh, Renaissance and uh, Renascimento. And those are, well, you know what? I'll just put a little ticker with info. I talked about this these sets a few times, but I'm trying to collect them. So this is the blue mana battery. This is a German one. I think most cards here are German. This is Carrying Ants, also German. This is good with Tron. Like Tron and Triart beat me a few times with this card. Awesome. Um, and then we have the Elven Riders, right? It's a 3-3, three, three, cannot be blocked by flying creatures. A cool combo with this is play this next to your Hurricane. You've got like Riders on the Storm. I kind of like that, but okay. Um, then we've got, yeah, this is Eternal Warrior. So what this does, this is just one red, right? Again, it's German. Enchant creature, and then the creature doesn't have to tap when it attacks. So actually... This is a little bit of a combo, right? These two pieces. I mean, it's 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 a bad combo, but you can attack with the bodyguard. It doesn't have to tap. So then the next turn, it can also take the damage if your opponent attacks back. Uh, you know, but I didn't say it's good, but it's it's synergy. And here we've got Inferno. So this deals six damage to everything. Every creature, every player, everything. And it's also, I believe it's an instant. Spontanzalba. I don't know if that means instant, but I believe it's an instant. Uh, so that means you can use it in combination with Suchi. Somebody kills your Suchi in combat, and then you can use those four mana as part of the cost for an Inferno. That would be pretty cool, right? Um, then we've got the uh, Junin Efreet, which this card is pretty good, actually. It's three mana, two black and one, for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Kanfliegen. Again, German. The problem here is you got to pay two black during your upkeep to keep it around. But then again, I mean, it's a problem that your opponent probably wants to, to deal with. So just play it out. Like in an aggro shell, bat moon next to it, you got a four, four flyer. I, I think it's got potential. Talking about potential, the here we go. The killer bees, always reminds me of the Wu-Tang album. It's flying one green plus one plus one. This was really a sought after card back in the day. Especially, you know, it, it's perfect for green because with green it's easy to ramp and you usually have too much mana and it's it's a great it's a great mana sink. And then we've got, um, oh yeah, it's 2-1. It can take cards from the opponent's hand. But it's kind of complicated. What's it called again? Yeah, the Lumpensammler, but it's, again, this is German. Um, the, the, hmm, man, the something, something. Actually, in this book, it plays a big part. In this book. Anyway, I'll I'll get back to you guys on this. I'll show a picture of the English version. You think you know all the cards and still you forget a few. Like I know the card, but I forget the name. Ragman, that's it. It's it's Ragman. That's it. Hey, hey. Sorry guys. Anyway, this is a red mana battery. Rota mana battery. These cards are just hilarious. I do love the art. I mean, they're kind of unplayable or not. Let me know in the comments if you think this is playable. Um. Oh, what is this called again? It's Legends, an Enchant Artifact. 
Ah, oh, I forgot the name. Whenever you take damage, you do a damage back, something like that. I'm just gonna show the English version. Sorry guys, I forgot the name. Relic, Relic Bind. Uh, maybe maybe it'll come back to me later in the video. And then we have the uh, the Ifrit, the Anti Ifrit. A 3-3 three, three does a lot of funny things, but if you don't play for Anti, you're not gonna play with it. I do love the art. Very cool. Very nice, who made it? Ah, Nene Thomas. Also did Hercules Recall. She's quite good like with, with flows in her artwork, if you know what I mean. Uh, ah, the Vaisa Mana Battery. So this is the white mana battery. I guess you could play with Armageddon or something, I don't know. Then we've got Ashes to Ashes from the Dark. These are all German, by the way. So my German Renaissance collection is looking quite good after this. It's a serious in injection. The um, the plant, living plant, right? Doesn't sound right, living plant. Anyway, it's a wall, it's a four five for four mana. So it's like an if if a free, but it cannot attack. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, an urn of gin. It's like an urn of gin that cannot attack. I mean, there's a reason it doesn't see a lot of play. I do again, I like the art. I'm a sucker. This Quentin Hoover, right? Yeah, Quentin Hoover. You can see it on the on the straight lines. Then you've got a Verfluchtungstreckbank. Oh, what's it called again? So this one, what it does, it comes into play and then everybody has to discard to four cards. Yeah? So, I, or is it just your opponent? I think, yeah, probably target opponent gets a discard to four. If it would be every player, it would actually be better because you could use it in like EDH. And I play some old school EDH. This would be a lot of fun. Maybe it's still useful because if you're playing multiplayer, there's always somebody with a handful, you know? You could even consider playing this in the sideboard against control decks. They just love to have cards in hand. I was recently playing against um, a Time Vault deck, Twiddle Vault, and they always have tons of cards in hand. I mean, this would have been super useful. Ah, the Iron Claw Orc, a classic. One red and one for a 2-2. And it cannot block any creatures with power greater than one. It's just, it's a coward. And because it's a coward, you just have to attack with it every single turn. There we have the Versunken Stats, or, or the Sunken City in English. All blue creatures get plus one, plus one. I actually play this in my uh, my mono blue budget deck, and I kind of play it as a sorcery, so I put it on the board to pump my Flying Man, for example, or my, you know, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. I attack with it, and then next turn, I usually just let it go. I don't pay the upkeep cost of two blue, but then it's already done its work, and sometimes I've got enough mana because we're a little bit later in the game, and I keep it around. So I, th I think if you look at it as, as a sorcery, with the option to extend its life for two blue, it's actually a lot better. Then we have the uh, Word of Binding. So Word of Binding is quite nice uh, with Royal Assassin. Uh, it's also quite nice with uh, with Meekstone. So what it does, two black and X, and this is a, a sorcerer, I believe. Hex that I. Tap X creatures. That's It's as simple as that. So you could just, you could just tap his board and then attack. For example, with an Hypnotic Spectre, and you can force your opponent to also discard a card, which is then replacing this card, so that's quite nice. I mean, I think I think in a deck with, with Meek Stone, with Hypnotic Spectre, like creatures like that, maybe the uh, the ants that we had earlier, the carry the carrying ants. That could be kind of nice, you know, Meek Stone, this, carrying ants, Hypnotic Spectre. I think we got a deck going on here. And then we have, oh, that's the token. So this is it. These are uh, these are the cards. They're so nice and colorful. And of course, this veteran. This is coming your way, Ian. If you're watching this video, it's going to Ontario, I believe. That's where you live, in uh, in Canada. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with my new cards. I'm super happy with uh, with Anson Medix's mill, and of course, with uh, with the new book, Eternal Ice. If you read it, let me know. Don't spoil, but let me know if it's good. And uh, for now, thank you very much for watching, and see you uh, next time. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?